So hey y'all, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video is yet again another Chama Chats video podcast edition. So by the title, we're gonna be doing another compilation video. And I would like to say that this is our 50th compilation video on this channel. So thank you to those who have been watching and supporting this segment. It's crazy to reach 50 in anything. So I'm very thankful to my subscribers that's been here for a while. Maybe you've been watching me since the very beginning. Let me know if you have, or if you're a new viewer and you just found me randomly, I'm very grateful for you. A few small things I wanna address. There's this running joke that I say my age in every video. Initially, I was doing it for context and because a lot of people just think I'm older than what I am because the way I speak or maybe my mindset in comparison to other people in their 20s. The only reason why I kept it up is because I always thought the comments were very funny and some people caught on to the pattern. But also, I have new viewers on every video that don't know anything about me and the context that they're watching me is very new. However, all of my information is always in the description box. Usually, I really just say it for context based off of what I'm talking about and society but if y'all don't need to hear it anymore then you won't your wish is my command lastly i am still watching the nickelodeon documentary and plan to have a full video on it i'll probably do another makeup tutorial with some of the suggestions that y'all gave for me on how to film that so i appreciate your comments on my last video and i definitely got y'all so on the docket tonight we have music mogul sean p diddy combs finally getting his past due heat and karma the feds raided his house and they're looking for evidence for sex trafficking which is wild but not surprising and there's a lot of things I want to say about this. Next, rapper Ceci Red announces that she did not wait six weeks before she started engaging back into sex after having a baby. There was some commentary about this and I do want to speak on this just from a different perspective because I'm starting to realize something about Sexy Red. And lastly, rapper Cardi B talked about going 50-50 in her household and there was a lot of internet commentary and debates. This is a little bit old but I missed it in my last video and I definitely wanted to talk about this because I feel like there's a conflicting narrative that is pushed on by social media versus is in reality. I also have some bonus topics, so wait until the end for more. And without further ado, let's get right into this video. So our first story is about Cardi B. So rapper Cardi B went viral a few weeks back for discussing her financial situation within her marriage to her husband, Offset. She basically said that she's in favor of 50-50, which translates to splitting bills equally down the middle. I think 50-50 can also mean splitting household tasks as well as childcare and things of that nature. As we know, Cardi B is a female rapper, and I feel like within the female rap genre, a lot of what they promote is flex culture, luxury, and money is a huge part of their aesthetic. What they spend on, how much they get booked for a show, and of course, the financial backing that they have from their men or different men. Literally in the song WAP, Cardi B says, I don't cook, I don't clean, but let me tell you how I got this ring. So I think a lot of people are under the perception that Cardi B and women like her obviously have the riches to support themselves without financial hardship. And being that she's with someone who is also higher earning, her partner probably supports her financially because I think as a society, like a global society, the ideology of men being providers kind of translates into them upholding the financial bulk of maintaining a household. Now, I'm not saying that this is always right. I'm not saying that this is true for everyone. I'm just saying that from the Stone Age up until now, men were the ones who worked, men were the ones who earned, men were the ones who provided and took care of the household, specifically financially. Let's not forget that women couldn't work up until like the last century. Women couldn't vote, women couldn't educate themselves in most cases. So when I talk about societal norms, of course they don't reflect what is normal today, but I think the historical component does lean on the side of men being financial providers of a household. So I don't think it's necessarily wrong for a lot of women that have that expectation, but I do think that now that times are changing and that women can earn a living for themselves and even within the black community, there is a huge number of people who were raised in a single mother household where a mom or just a woman was the sole provider. It does play a part in the debate of this. So let's check out what Cardi B had to say. I feel like it's very controversial when like, be like, oh, I don't go 50 50, but it's like, all right. So if you and your man make the same amount of, of money, right? Mm -hmm. But only your man is the one that paying all the bills. How y'all are gonna save up to like buy a house or buy a business? Cause he's never gonna be able to afford to. So it's like certain things is like a, a joint thing to do. You, you know gotta what I'm work saying? together. Like it's, like, it's like a work together, but I just be feeling like sometimes people, like the internet really be having people fucked up from like real reality type shit. So it's like, it's like, all right, so your, your mom and dad used to work 
every single day, right? Mm -hmm. So your mom and dad used to work every single day so your mom could save her money and what, buy purses and your dad just pay all the bills? That's not how it works. This no. is that your mom was in the house cooking and cleaning every day, your dad was working, or they was both working to, to pay both the bills. Like, y'all be right. acting like y'all don't know what the fuck that is like no more. Like, come on. And your mom money was your, was your dad money and your dad money was your mom money. Like, it, was, it was like that. Yeah. It was it, like, it's like, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not a feminist anymore because it's like, sometimes it's like, y'all bitches don't be living in the real world. Right. Y'all not living there. Y'all be talking about my money is my money and his. Now, surface level, I agree with Cardi B on certain things, such as the relationship being 50 50 in a financial sense does contribute to building as a partnership, building as a team, and also executing and being successful together. And I think that stems from the idea of what marriage really is supposed to be, where two become one. But of course, the social media reality of today definitely contradicts that, especially when we have female rappers, Instagram models, rapper baby mamas, and just your average everyday women either pushing out this theory or actually living by the thought that a man can't do anything for a woman other than pay her bills. We've seen so many viral stories, videos, debates about what a man's purpose is when it comes to courting a woman and also keeping a woman. But I will say this, I believe that there's a lot of young women, and here I go again, especially women in their 20s particularly, that have been jaded by social media to believe that a man's sole purpose is to provide and take care of you and that's it. And if that's something you're seeking, I'm not mad at you. However, I feel like if you place financial maintenance as the only factor to what a man can do for you, you're missing out out on so many other things that can actually fulfill you. Because if we're being honest, a man who is providing 100% of your lifestyle is going to have way stricter rules, and I use that term loosely, way higher expectations and also way less leniency for you to do whatever you wanna do. And I think that's because money is oftentimes synonymous with the word power. And when someone has the power to literally kick you out of the house because your name isn't on it or they pay the bills or whatever it may be, you could end up in that position. Of course, I don't wish that on anyone. I think social media has definitely tainted a lot of women's views on this. I think the overall answer to this is to do what works for you and your household. Some women aren't mad about going 50-50 with their man and it works for them and they're happy. And other women feel as though a man has to provide everything and that's fine for those women as well. My only caution is that when a man does have that leverage to say that he provides everything, if there is any turmoil in the relationship, you can't necessarily acquire anything at all because you technically didn't contribute to it. And if the roles were reversed where you're a woman and you're paying for all the bills, the rent, mortgage, groceries, car note, and so be it and your man does something or your relationship doesn't work out you would cut him off of everything and he would have to leave with nothing of course things are different in a marriage i don't think it's that black and white assets and ownership of things are going to have to be split in some type of way within a marriage but if you're a woman whose bills are taken care of by your husband and y'all decide to separate in most cases i don't think you're going to just get the house or the car or whatever it may be it's almost more of an experience that you get your bills paid than it is truly building and contributing to something that you can take away with you if things were to go left. In a 50-50 situation, I think there's more potential leaving benefits just because if you've been part of the equation of all of the finances, then your consideration to acquire whatever it may be is definitely more potent. I'm not encouraging it or talking against it, I'm just saying. I'll be real, I don't think the average woman is getting all her bills paid for. In this society, in this economy, with this inflation, you have to be with a man who really has it to spend it. And I'll be real, there are a lot of men like that, but there's also a lot more men that are not like that. Most of the girls who are getting all of their bills paid for are dating higher earning men that are just harder to acquire because there's just not as many. Not saying it's not doable. I know a lot of these artists and social media famous people push out a lot of narratives, but they also have the money to obtain things on their own even if all of their bills are getting paid for. For example, Cardi B talked about owning certain homes in different places and then her and Offset also have a home that they both contribute to. I think that's more about her having the liquidation to do that versus that being normal for the average woman. I think 50-50 debates are disingenuous to be quite frank because it's only only fueled by social media talk and not what reflects reality. I don't think it makes you less of a woman or that your man doesn't care about you if you're going 50-50 with him in your household. I also don't think it makes you more of a woman because you're getting all your bills paid because there are side effects to that. I think people should just do what works for them. I'm kind of in favor of both just depending on the situation and what each individual person wants to do. To maintain a household will never just be 50-50 and that's the reality. Everybody has to pull their weight here and there to make it successful and sometimes you're giving more than you're getting and sometimes 
sometimes you're getting more than you're giving. Let me know y'all's thoughts. I want to hear from the married ladies in your situation with your spouse, but I also want to hear from the unmarried ladies who may live with their boyfriend or girlfriends too. And then I just want to hear in general, what is y'all's opinion on the approach to 50-50 financing within a household? Our next story talks about rapper Sexy Red. I like to call her Sessie, but I complained to YouTube and surprisingly my videos haven't been flagged since, which is crazy. Anyway, we all know that Sexy gave birth to her baby about a month ago and her actually getting pregnant was a topic because it was so early in her career at the height of her career and we discussed this thoroughly because oftentimes that can restrict a woman from advancing in her career but I think that traditional assumption is kind of dated because we've seen many women have kids and carry on within their careers. Halle Bailey is an example who also recently had a baby and although people question why and with who I don't think Halle Bailey is going to fall off. I do think that getting pregnant during a high point in your career is still very risky and something I wouldn't encourage but I think the social climate of women being pregnant and working has revealed that women have to work, need to work, and they're still going to continue to work and still maintain their motherly duties, which I think is actually a beautiful thing because I don't have any kids, but if I had a kid while doing everything that I do now, I would have to quit. So shout out to the moms who work and hold it down, especially those who do it by themselves. I'm already knowing even without the experience of that, that it's hard. Shout out to y'all. You're doing great and you're trying your best. Don't be too hard on yourself. But Sexy revealed that she did not wait. The doctor recommended six weeks before she started having sex again. And doctors recommend that you wait six weeks after giving birth to prevent infection, to heal your body, and just overall recovery. I mean, you just birthed a human being. Your vagina and privates were probably stretched and enlarged, and you don't want to add any additional tears, which is definitely a possibility. And you're usually still bleeding, so you could risk getting a hemorrhage or even a UTI, so I understand the recommendation. So the Neighborhood Talk reported that Sexy didn't rate six weeks after having her baby. She wrote on Instagram and tagged OTF Duty Low and said, gonna look me dead in the eye and say, you ain't wait six weeks, did you? Sure didn't Buki, what's wrong? With two laughing faces. And then she further commented on that post and said, baby, I would have got cracked in the hospital bed if I could have, what's going on? And of course you can be outraged by this. I understand the concerns, I'm even concerned, but I also feel as though for the women that don't or didn't wait, you're probably okay right now. It's really just the risk that's the issue and also voicing something so medically irresponsible. But here's my take. I believe Sexy Red is really just a stereotype and I think she's truly put on a platform to spew a lot of ignorant things, stereotypical things, and things that make people say, huh? What? excuse me? That's where I wanted to go with this opinion. I don't even have much to say, but it's just starting to be very obvious what she's about. It might not just be her. She could be encouraged by management or some people think the powers that be, but I think Sexy Red is very aware of how her polarizing songs, her movement, her posts, and so forth definitely make her trend, and I think she manipulates that. It's similar to Krishan Rock. As much as we know that Krishan Rock is not all the way there, I still believe that she did understand and recognize her ability to manipulate social media. Isn't it funny how we haven't heard from Krishan on rock in a while because not only is her baby daddy in jail but also her clout is tied to Blueface, which i tried to say but there were so many people that tried to advocate for the fact that krishan rock is who she is because of who she is and she may be but it's also a two-piece chicken special with one free side her and Blueface are the two-piece chickens because literally the bird brain behavior that they spew is crazy and then everything on the side is free anyway i'm getting off topic this has nothing to do with them but i feel like the same rhetoric is very obvious with sexy red she says things and does things and post things to maintain that stereotype because it's lucrative for her and it's also interesting to a lot of people whether you wanted to know the information or not. We can go on and on about how diabolical her imagery is and how counterproductive it is for children and young people but she doesn't care. That's why we know that she didn't wait six weeks after giving birth to harvest another eggplant. I also think she's withholding the identity of her child's father. It could be for any reason. Some people just want their privacy but it's also hard to consider that when we know so much about these famous strangers. You know I get comments that say, since I'm pursuing music or just growing on YouTube, do I ever think that anything I say will be a conflict of interest because I've spoken about so many people? But I kind of feel that a lot of these famous strangers say way worse things, but also they get passes for influencing and contributing to a lot of downfalls in society, and people sit idly by and support them to the point where they're actually rich and famous. So if me countering some of the things I see in the world through famous people and or celebrities is wrong, then they are double wrong. But let me know if y'all think there's anything wrong with what I'm doing. Am I killing my chances or am I doing a job that a lot of people do and stating my opinions like everyone has the right to do. Overall, Sexy Red is just a caricature and I'm surprised that she's been popular for this long. I will say some of her songs, they are club bangers. I do like that F My Baby Daddy song, that beat is crazy. The lyrics, 
no because no but that beat is definitely sick i know she recently dropped her song get it sexy i didn't really care for it but i know we're definitely gonna hear it all summer long and at the end of the day i'll say this with no intent to be offensive but she is a one trick pony so once people get tired of her horse they're gonna get on another one and ride off into the sunset so our last story talks about music mogul sean diddy combs this has been the number one trending story over the last few days in the video i did about young miami essentially being over i definitely predicted that there'll be more to come there's no way lawsuits are coming out left and right even if they're civil lawsuits a criminal lawsuit would have to follow with all of this and did. So just the other day, the feds raided a few of his homes, particularly one in Miami, and this was just the beginning, if you ask me. They are alleging that P. Diddy is involved in some sort of sex trafficking, and I know that's an allegation, but there's a lot of supporting evidence and personal accounts from people that lean on this to be very true. We all know at this point, P. Diddy is not a good person. From his shady business ways, to his treatment of people, to his affinity with minors and unconsenting individuals as it relates to sexual situations, it just shows what has probably always been true and been true for a very long time. There's some input on Young Miami. The court documents have been out, but basically stated that Young Miami has been doing cocaine with him, possibly trafficking that, and potentially recruiting women for his devious sexual encounters. And she paraded this relationship with Diddy as if she literally hit the lottery. It was all about the money. It was all about being spoiled. It was all about being arm candy. And now we see there's implications involved, and that's probably why Young Miami has been pretty quiet. And let me say this, I don't like how people are trying to compare Carisha and Cassie. I think I think there's a difference when you're a willing participant in something and you are showboating your affiliation with someone who everybody knows is not a good person. It automatically taints people's perception of your involvement and your innocence. Young Miami could very well be innocent in a lot of things, but let's be real. The way how she went about their affiliation does not paint her in the best light. And it's not just about her accepting a side baby or going back and forth with other women who are attached to Diddy. It's really the fact that a lot of the things that she's obtained in her career as of recent, such as her talk show and her being endorsed in certain ways, come straight from the same villain who is now under fire. And she didn't consider any of that before she went into it. She didn't consider the fact that she actually had a successful career. And she didn't consider the fact that she's grown enough to know what she was doing. Cassie got with Diddy when she was 19. And I'll be transparent, at the age of 19, I probably made the worst relationship mistakes I've made in my entire life, being young and naive. Although I do think that Cassie knew about things that were also nefarious, she never portrayed herself to be a willing participant. And she's been very hush-hush about their relationship for well over a decade. So there's a difference. Somebody literally tweeted and said, where Carisha at? And she actually commented back and said, right here, what's up? And I feel like this is just dumb. Like there's no better way to put it other than you look dumb and you just need to stop talking. Her trying to act unbothered as if she's not about to be at the very least questioned about some things, I don't buy it. Remember she said that they go together real bad. So now that the bad is here and y'all been acting bad, you gotta stand on business. Moving on, the most alarming part of this is that Diddy has now fled the country. Reports state that he is possibly somewhere in an Antigua. And since Antigua does not have any extradition agreements with the United States, they can't physically come and get him, let alone the Antiguan government can't deport him back to the United States to face any of these convictions, at least not at the moment. Hence why Diddy meticulously fled to a country where there's nothing the government can do from a legal standpoint. What's also alarming is that both of his sons, Justin Combs and Christian Combs, were detained and Diddy was nowhere to be found. Like where in the world is Waldo? Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Diddy fled the country while his children were being detained by the feds and handcuffed while the properties were being searched. And I think that's very reflective of his lack of care and the devilish spirit that exists within him. Someone said that P. Diddy is the real life Lucius Lyons from the show Empire, and I can't unsee it because it's very true. Diddy is the type of man who will literally execute anyone in his path to maintain his power and get what he wants. So to see his children in handcuffs while he's on a private jet to some tropical island is very telling of his disregard for anybody, even his own children. This entire thing brings up a lot of questions there are people asking what really happened to Kim Porter, who was his child's mother for three of his children. There are also people asking about other artists that he's been linked to, such as Jay-Z and more. And if there's a day that Jay-Z becomes implicated in anything like this, I think that will definitely be the breaking point for hip hop. There will be more to come on this, like we've been saying. And I'll be honest, I'm very happy this is all happening, especially someone who is a part of entertainment. This may not stop all of the disgusting and negative things that happen in the industry, but it definitely will cause people to know that no matter how much power, money, 
money or legacy that you possess, no one, and I mean no one, can get away with anything forever. Now, I usually would be ending here, but I wanted to do a new segment called Next, where I talk about some trending topics in a short, brief commentary. So we're covering some stories that were trending within the last few weeks. Starting off, there was a cargo ship that crashed into a bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, and this was very hard to watch. At this moment, they said there are crew members of that ship still missing. There were two people rescued, and it's just one of those things that you don't ever think could happen until it does. There's a lot of people who have a fear of driving on bridges, let alone crossing a bridge, and I completely understand why and how that fear has now been maximized because this was like something out of a movie. Most of the comments that people said about this is that it's such a blessing to be able to make it back home at the end of the day, and that is very true. We definitely have to count our blessings and also pray for safe travels anytime you get on the road. Anything could happen. My prayers are not only with the city of Baltimore, but specifically those who are directly affected by this because this is just a tragedy that no one saw coming. Next, two of our favorite biggest hip hop rappers are at odds. Drake and Future apparently have fallen out. They've unfollowed each other from social media, and this is interesting because Drake and Future have honestly made great music together. One of my favorite songs from my freshman year of college was Where You At by Future featuring Drake. This is such an unpopular take, but hear me out. If you listen to the lyrics of that song, it's actually pretty motivational. Like granted, it's trap and it's talking about a lot of unbecoming things, but if you just listen to the lyrics, like go listen, it's a pretty motivational tune. But these two apparently are no longer friends. People are speculating that they fell out over a stripper. And this is also said to not be the case as well. So I don't really know what to believe. I don't foresee Future who has a Noah's Ark full of children falling out with somebody over a girl. And I don't see Drake, Playboy, Playmate of the Century falling out with somebody over a girl either. I'm almost convinced that both of them have probably done two man missions with women. So again, I don't know what to believe. But there was also this post that I saw that stated how they've been dissing each other in songs for a very long time. A lot of the songs on Drake's projects have certain titles that also mimic a lot of the songs on Future's project and I never realized that until I saw the post. So clearly something went down. There were other entertainers such as Rick Ross, Meek Mill, Kendrick Lamar who have also followed suit in unfollowing Drake. So I'm not too sure what the true beef is but I really wonder what Drake did or what Future did. If y'all have any conspiracies or theories or even proof let us know down below. Next and last Instagram influencer Ari Fletcher clapped back at a Twitter user for calling her out on one of her latest videos that she did with her boyfriend Moneybag Yo. A few months ago back in 2023 there was a trending challenge called the ceiling challenge that went viral. Basically you tape your phone to a ceiling bend over and let that booty clap. So people were actually requesting for Ari to do this because her butt is very big and it moves and it jiggles and you know people like that. And she didn't she kind of alluded to the fact that she would but she never did it while the trend was at its highest. But then the other day Moneybag Yo released this video of Ari doing the ceiling challenge as well as promoting one of his upcoming songs called Bussin. Now I don't know if I've said this probably I say a lot of things but Moneybag Yo is actually one of my favorite rappers. I think he's unproblematic he just makes his music and he has a lot of club bangers and he's actually one of those people that got me to start writing music. I know that sounds crazy but it's true. I'm gonna have to play my song whole lot of traumas at the end of this video and will. Y'all know that's my song that's themed after one of his records. Make sure you stay tuned to the end and I gotta drop that. I definitely gotta drop that song. Anyway there was a Twitter user named Josh Prophet. He quoted the video and said I'm telling you all this generation of black women do is fantasize about being rapper baby mamas, eat crab legs, drink liquor, lie and get pregnant. And this is crazy because it is a straight shot at Ari and even though it wasn't directly towards her he was referencing the influence of her it's still about her. So Ari caught wind of this and said Josh don't use me for your little insulting shenanigans. I have multi-million dollar businesses in a five-year relationship. I have a handsome smart son that is very well taken care of. Retired my mom. Should I go on? It's $40,000 to book me. Find somebody else to play with. And I'm not gonna lie the retired my mom statement was definitely a flex. He started it and Ari finished it. But I honestly think two things can be true at once in this. I do think the influence of a figure like Ari has rubbed off on a lot of this generation. Hence why I talked about the 50-50 debate earlier in this video. But just even more so the infatuation with luxury and being affiliated with high earning men especially in entertainment. I mean why do you think that Carisha basically gambled her career just to be affiliated with P. Diddy? So I do believe there's truth to what he's saying but I also believe there's truth in what Ari was saying as well. You can't use her as the narrative for a general statement when it kind of sounds like you're just mad that you didn't get with her or somebody like her. I think Ari has definitely matured and gotten back into a better reputation than what she had years ago. And I saw that from watching the Impact ATL show. I think Ari just needs her own show because she kind of carries the show both on the first season and the second season. And yes, she is all of those things per se, but I do think what she's been able to do with her opportunity is somewhat commendable. Still not my cup of tea, would not hang out with her. And I do see the cautions and negative aspects to someone like her, but I do see both sides to this debate.
So that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please let me know your commentary on my commentary down below. What do you think? What do you know? Let me know. If you haven't already, go follow me on my TikTok. Y'all know I've been promoting that. I'm gonna be posting some new stuff on there. So make sure you're following me on TikTok and watch my videos. Check me out. Also, don't forget to follow me on all of my social media networks. And I will see y'all in my next video. Bye, y'all. They didn't know I am a rare bitch. We started beefing. They ended up well done. I'm deathless. You talking about money. So if a broke nigga said something, I ain't hear him. I'm leaving you scary and looking for clues like you Scooby and Shaggy and Velma. Thank me for letting you get close to me. Going to a place you are not welcome. Philly girl not giving no liberty. So do not be surprised when your bell rung. I know y'all be shocked by my flow. They like, where she find this when I speak? They like, damn, son. And I thought a nigga who was eating my ass from the back when I asked had said some. PUA money ran out. Now your ass on the drop. Close your mouth. Don't say no. Owing me $200, these niggas be broke, it's the truth, let me tell ya Smoking them roaches, doing nothing all day Laying down on the couch, he a bad boy If he does not make me feel like a queen Going ghost on his ass, Danny Phantom I'm the type to work on all got them day Get a check, laying in the tub like I'm Red Run I am a queen, two colors degrees Man, women like me, we are seldom And I thought a girl who was trying to be me But had feel miserably, had said some I'm telling you, girl, just stay right in your place Before I relocate you to Belgium And money bag, yo, thought a broke nigga said some But broke niggas can't talk, so we ain't hearing them I know a bitch who I heard got that itch She make niggas sick when they get a whiff When they get a sniff, I'm like, damn, pray for him She don't have no hits in her lace from the stiff Chama, can I hold some? Nah, I can't do that False claiming bitches, but all I said is truth yes. Never heard of you when they ask, I said, who's that? Uh, Mission in the motherland and it will push a roof Y'all hoes be swearing y'all get in the bag But it must be a joke or a gimmick Y'all hoes be swearing y'all music is hot But I'll fry your ass on the skillet Y'all hoes be swearing y'all running the game But couldn't even play in the scrimmage She forgot I'm it, so we about to play tag Bam, whole lot of chamas on their ass Yeah Whole lot of chummers on the ass, goddamn. Whole lot of chummers on the ass, man. Whole lot of chummers on the ass, better run, cause it's whole lot of chummers on the ass. Oh, riding the O5 Camry. Long legs call me Bambi. Bitch. Tryna make a Billy, not Mandy. Keep my foot on your neck, it's a stampede. Got it fucking with bosses, now he's always giving me back pain. Counting so much money, it's like I'm playing math games. Yeah, they call me Queen, and Chama is the last name. Long way from North 3rd Street, long way from Northeast. Baby Glock with no baby. I want a 7 Series Mercedes And I know you mad if you play me It's through a few of y'all that hate me